These meetings are so boring, I'd rather be working. That's a comment actually overheard in a safety meeting. Now, please don't make it possible for your people to mutter this stuff. Please tell me that you've made a commitment to improve your safety meetings this year. Please tell me that you're not going to do exactly the same things you did last year. See, there's a difference between safety meetings and engaging safety meetings. Safety meetings are typically information dumps, and they're full of all of the ineffective things that other people seem to use in their safety meetings. It's like bad safety meetings give others permission to do the same. But those bad meetings don't get the results either. Then there are engaging safety meetings, ones that build teamwork and motivation for safety. Which ones are you organizing? You know, in the last few years, I focused a lot of time and energy into helping others to build better and more effective safety meetings. In fact, I wrote a full book on them. Uh, and it's one that I still give away for free, The Perfect Safety Meeting, and now my new book, People Work, The Human Touch in Workplace Safety. It features two full chapters dedicated to building better safety meetings as part of an overall strategy to help build a better safety culture. But part of the strategy for safety meetings is a requirement to avoid mind-numbing and boring your people whenever possible. You, you know, it's, it's so much more difficult for employees to engage and stay sharp if you insist on throwing every boring statistic, figure, graph, and performance chart that you can lay your hands on at them in one meeting. Boring safety meetings evolve out of those boring meetings that you've already attended. And over time, bad meetings evolve into something worse. See, if you don't correct it, of course it's going to get worse. We need to put an end to the parade of PowerPoint armed, personality deficient robots who simply go through the motions at safety meetings. We need to stop the corporate karaoke, the word for word, sing along, regurgitation of every thought in the presenter's head that's posted on a slide in bullet points. Sorry, but your people are going to disengage from the safety meeting the moment you put up a slide with seven lines of type on some boring blue background. If it's not fun or engaging for attendees, they just won't participate. If they don't understand the point of the meeting, of their role in it, they'll sit at the back of the room, arms crossed, and be a spectator instead of a participant. And that's exactly what we want to avoid, spectators at safety meetings. So, here are the three top strategies for building effective and engaging safety meetings. Number one, people engage with other people. Stop using PowerPoint as the message. It's not the message. It's a supplementary medium that's supposed to help you convey a more powerful message. But it's no substitution for the human element of actually engaging people. People don't engage with PowerPoint slides. They engage with other people. Besides, PowerPoint's for lazy people. People who won't take the time to create a safety meeting strategy that engages the hearts and minds of employees. Stop at the shopping list of bullet points you think that need to be in the presentation. Most of them don't. Engage your people. Engage hearts and minds. When you capture hearts and minds, you engage them in the same way you want them to engage themselves. So instead of an information dump, think of your safety meetings with like a town hall format. Think about discussions versus lectures. Involve them. Ask their opinions. Solicit their ideas. Maybe even include senior management as part of the discussions to keep the conversation on safety. Make senior management talk about safety like they truly believe in it. Talk about the things your organization's doing really well already and then develop ideas on how to make it even better. Don't let anyone sit silently in a safety meeting. Engage. Then number two, keep it simple. One idea at a time. Do you know why safety meetings are full of stats and charts and inspection reports and procedures and rules and reminders and, and, and because safety meeting organizers don't know what to say. So they say all of it. Then they go into the LinkedIn groups looking for ideas of what to say next because, well, because they feel like they're repeating themselves. But you don't have to say all of it. In fact, you need to say very little. You don't fill a safety meeting with stuff you have a safety meeting with a specific purpose in mind. It's not about filling a time slot. It's about making sure that you advance a new idea. The point is to make your people better, not just better informed. 
Anyone can dump a load of information, but only the effective safety leaders can help people become better safety performers. In safety meetings, you need to protect your people from being exposed to too much information or conflicting information, and you're quite capable of doing that. Look, if you can plan a safety procedure or an emergency escape, you can plan a safety meeting. And you've got to plan them. The theme, points of discussion, content, consistency of message, and the message needs to be tight for everyone who will present. Shorten the meeting with one thought at a time. Stick all of the supplementary information, you know, all those things you'd normally stick in those tiny lines of type and PowerPoint slides. Put that in newsletters and emails. Instead, tell the meeting attendees the four things that they want to know. One, why they're there. Two, what they're going to learn or discuss. Three, why it's important. And four, what you want them to do with the information they get. Keep it simple. Keep it short and tight. Focus on what you want to have happen. Then, move on to the final point. Number three, create a call to action. Now, what's the point of having a meeting if you don't want something to come out of it? If you don't want something to happen, send a memo. But if you're going to have a meeting, there had better be something come of it. There needs to be a call to action. What do you want your people to do better, more of, or, or differently at the end of the meeting? Start your planning at the end of the meeting and work your way backwards. Figure out what you want them to do more of, to do differently, or what you want them to do better, and then point everything in the meeting at accomplishing that one thing. Everything you do and talk about in the meeting should support the call to action. Make sure each slide, each point of discussion, speech, instruction, or handout supports that one thing. See, it's not enough to just know the information. Your people now have to do something with the information. That's why you start with a call to action and planning, and you work backwards from there. Everything can have a call to action. I mean, even this video can have a call to action. Like, I want you to download my free book, The Perfect Safety Meeting. Can you do that? Then I want you to buy my new book, People Work, The Human Touch and Workplace Safety. And if you like what's in that book, I want you to consider how I might bring you some value as a safety culture consultant or as a safety meeting speaker. You see? A clear call to action. Now, remember, if all you want to do is inform your people or remind them of procedures and rules, put it in a memo or an email. But if you're going to bring them into a meeting, involve them, engage them, ask them. It's their meeting too. Make it valuable for them. When you keep that purpose in mind, you'll have less difficulty in figuring out what you want to say in your safety meetings. You'll move from boring safety meetings to effective and engaging safety meetings.